40inbox.com and we're going to be checking out this post called Nervous About Buying a Car. So let's check this out. My wife and I are trying to buy a 2023 Honda Odyssey. We have three kids, age 2, 6, and 8. Seems like you guys are kind of busy. And our current car is tight on space. We've needed a new vehicle for 18 months, but the market has been so crazy. Well, I mean, I don't know if you really need a new vehicle, you know. It was supposed to get better in June, but it didn't. Now, I'm hearing the end of the year. I don't think I can delay my wife anymore. Is this just the way things are going to be from now on? The Honda dealership can get us a loan at 3.9% with a base price of $45,000. Hold on. A Honda Odyssey is what? A van? You want to get a van and you're willing to spend 45 k on a van? <laughs> like, you could buy like a van for like 30 k 20 k 15 k 10 k maybe even 5 k We tried to shop around for rates, but were denied. I was shocked since we both have 800 credit scores. We banked with Chase and they denied us based on value of vehicle is insufficient relative to can, I guess to car sales price. This can't be a good sign. We'll be using all of our savings, not the emergency fund to get this vehicle. I'm basically terrified at this point. Look, no offense. There's literally no reason to be terrified because you should not put any money on this car. You should not get this car at all period end of story right like i understand wanting more space for your kids for your wife maybe to feel a little bit more safe in the vehicle but at the same time do not get a loan for a car it is so expensive to own a car with debt on it like, it is so expensive. And hold on, I want to check out, like, a Honda Odyssey. What the hell is a Honda Odyssey? Honda Odyssey. The fun family minivan. Eh. Like, no offense. Right, you're real, like you're really willing, really willing to spend forty k on this, forty five k on this, like really, on this, you're willing to do that. You're willing to put all of your money that's not in your emergency fund on like a down payment for this car. Yo, <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, to put it into perspective, hold on. Let's go, like, with Ford. Let's see. Ford, I think Ford might have, like, a van. Trucks and vans. Okay. You could get a Transit Connect 35600 That's definitely uh, way too expensive for that. Uh... Toyota. Does Toyota have vans? Vehicles. Cars, minivan. I mean, you could get a Prius for twenty-seven four fifty, which is kind of overpriced. GR Corolla. Interesting. Hmm. Hatchbacks are good options too. You know. I mean, 23155 for a hatchback that could fit all of your family ain't too bad. Uh, looks like they don't really got a van. I mean, they got a Sienna, I guess. But here's the thing, right? I mean, you could buy a used minivan for a lot cheaper. You could definitely find a used minivan for like 20 k Like, if I was this person... Now, I don't know what they're making, 
But like, let's say that they're making like combined like husband, wife, whatever. Let's say combined, they're making like 80k a year after tax, just to keep it simple. I would not be willing to buy something forty thousand dollars plus because that'd be like half your income. So if I was them, with the cash that I do have, I would buy that car. If anything, I'd probably sell the car that I have right now, that I'm using right now to transport the kids, sell that car, and add some money on top of that to buy the newer car. Like a van that could fit everyone and all that kind of stuff, right? But like, think about it. $45,000 for a minivan? No. $45,000 on debt? No. Like, don't do this. Like... Do not put yourself and your family in a bad financial spot just because you are so afraid of like, oh no, is the car market going to get even crazier? Oh my god, are we going to have even higher interest rates? Probably. You're going to have higher interest rates as time goes on. But it's like, don't do this. Like, do not put yourself in a bad spot like this. 3.9 is far below average. It's an excellent rate. Like, the thing is, like, I've been seeing people starting to get, like, nearly, like, 9 or 8%, even higher than that, for, like, car loans, which is insane. So a lot of these people in the comments saying is like, oh, like, you know, that the 3.9% auto rate is fantastic. The thing is, it's only fantastic compared to other loan rates out there. It doesn't mean that it's good. Like, you should not be getting into debt for a car. That is going to go down in value heavily, heavily. Let's see. I like this person's comment. So a two, six, eight year old are going to destroy a minivan. Why spend $45,000 on the nicest one? What's to stop you from getting a five-year-old minivan with 30k miles for less than 30k? Like, I agree, right? Like, you have a bunch of kids. The car minivan is going to get packed. And yet, you want to buy a brand new vehicle that is going to get messed up. Like, just straight up messed up. Even if you're like your kids are like super well-behaved... All it takes is like, oh no, one single drop of this, bam, there you go. Like, huh. I'm a little concerned on this post considering what you have stated as facts. You are worried about the rates and being upside down in a vehicle that you're pouring all money into just to get it. Vehicles would depreciate the instant that thing is rolled off the lot, so there's that. Agreed. It depends on how much you're paying for it and if it is outright or not. If outright... Rate would never matter if a large sum of savings such as 30k is placed in 015k at 3.99. That's not bad. Still not good. The other problem is the age of your kids. Unless everything is saran wrapped and bubble wrapped, you will never ever see the value of that vehicle ever again. What's the compromise of this vehicle? You buy this, you get a PlayStation because you can stick the word compromise and provide no data. Make sure the weight and value is a fair compromise moving forward. Yeah. 
And, like, to put into perspective, like, with, like, understanding that, like, things can always happen. Like, for example, right? I'm a person who loves cars a lot, right? But I have this very bad, um, bad luck where every single car I have ever purchased, ever, has been kamikaze by deer, okay? And these are all brand new cars, and they have been kamikaze by deer. So, the value of the car <laughs> has been completely destroyed due to no <laughs> control of my own. Due to no fault on my own, that vehicle's worth is far less. Debt, no debt, is far less, right? And that is with every single car I have ever owned. Like, can you imagine, like, just imagine it, you buy a car, oh, by the way, there's actually quite a few things, so, every car I got has had its windshield cracked by a big rig hitting a rock, and it just hitting straight, like, in, like, the perfect spot on the windshield and just cracking it, right, within two months of buying the car, within four months of buying a car, it's probably been hit by a deer already. <laughs> and for some reason, it's not just one deer. It's usually two deers at the same time. Which somehow, none of the deers ever die from getting, like, just ramming into a car. But, <sighs> so that's my issue, right? That every single car I buy has been hit by a deer. Or some animal. Or has been destroyed in some way. Due to no fault of my own. So, when I view cars, I have this very hard justification putting a lot of money into cars or buying a nice car because I know, deep down inside, due to my luck, I'm going to lose the value of that car very quickly. <laughs> right? Now, other people will probably not have to deal with that type of situation, depending on where they live. But you are still going to be dealing with the problem that no matter what car you buy, for the majority of the population, your car, the value of it, will go down. It won't go down as steep as my situations, but it will go down, period. Right? If you, and if you use the car, it's going to go down in value. If you don't use the car, it's going to go down in value. Right? So like, no matter what, you are losing money constantly when you buy a car. So why would you make the losses so extreme? Why would you put basically everything that you own on a brand new car? It doesn't make sense. Financially speaking, it does not make sense. And you don't want to put your family in a bad spot either. Let's see. This person says, real talk, a 13K Odyssey will perfectly suit your needs and be disposable depreciation for when you're young. Kids destroy it, as pointed out by another poster. It's a good rate, but that uh, that's a lot of money out monthly, and buyer's remorse kicks in when the newness wears off. The fact that you are posting here tells me that you're definitely going to experience that. The thing is, like, the guy is so scared, but, like, he's so scared on so many different levels. Like, he's scared about making his wife wait for a better opportunity. He's scared that things are going to get more expensive in the car market. And he's scared whether or not this is even, like, financially smart. Like, ugh. this is the thing, right? I think the best way that people should, like, look at cars is, like, okay, what can I spend on a car where I do not care what happens to the car? Right? Because just things happen. People hit your car. You never know what the hell is going to happen when you're operating a vehicle or when you own a vehicle. Right? Because when, you got to think about it. Right? There's so many interactions when it comes to a car. Right? 
you're driving around hundreds if not thousands of people monthly, weekly, whatever, right? There's so many stoplights. There's so many just like random things going on. There's animals all over the place. Like things can happen and will happen, right? So I would view this as like, okay, what is the limit, like the money limit where I would be completely okay with spending this amount of money on a car and not worry about what happens to the car, right? Like, oh, if the windshield gets cracked, not really care about it. Oh, if a tire blows out, uh, don't really care about it, just replace it, etc. Right, like, oh, scratches on the car because someone slightly, like, tapped it when they went out of their parking spot and you didn't see them and they didn't leave a note. Don't care about it. Right, like, what is that limit, right? Like, where is that in terms of, like, your, uh, that point where basically it's, like, enough money to where you actually like the car and it fits all of your needs, but it's not too pricey where you're like, you start getting nervous about where you park the car, right? Because I've heard like inter- like interviews with people who own like supercars, for example, where a lot of them typically don't even drive their supercar, even though they love the car, right? Because they are so nervous about what is going to happen to that car. Because it's like a $200,000 car, a $300,000 car. So they're going to get like super like anxiety ridden because of that. So like what is that price point for your car that you're going to get where you can park it wherever you want to park it and not care. You could haul things without really caring. Like like say you like toss in like a bunch of like dirty stuff or like muddy stuff. Like are you really going to care that much about it? Like, so, like, what is that price point? And as long as it fits within that, probably go ahead and do it. But it's, like, like, people really got to understand, like, cars typically don't make you money. <laughs> so, 45K is a lot of money to commit to spending. In five years, your kids will all be much bigger, and you're probably not going to dig the van lifestyle anymore. So why bother with something this new and expensive? Just because your wife promised you you can get a new truck next, this is how people stay poor regardless of income. I know it's not sexy, but take it from a guy that was in the same boat and bought the newer vehicles and then later downgraded. It's not worth it. You're about to fall into a trap of purchasing a new vehicle every four to five years and is a habit you will have a hard time breaking. And the biggest problem with like someone like going like, like a family going through this process of buying like a brand new car every 4 to 5 years is that you are always losing money every single month, right? And it goes up. These are buying newer cars which are more expensive as time goes on. And so you are just constantly losing more and more and more money. Like, say you're spend, like, spending like $500 per month on your car payment for like now and the next like five years, right? Then after that, you're like, oh man, this car that just came out looks so nice. It has so much horsepower, etc. blah, 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 bells and whistles. It's got like an AI chatbot that can be your girlfriend and boyfriend, etc. Like, so now you spend like 800 or a thousand bucks per month now for that vehicle, right? Like it's just going to keep on escalating over and over and over again. It's like the same kind of concept with like constantly upgrading your smartphone, right? Which, by the way, I think it's crazy that some people have, like, payments on smartphones, which I think is insane. Like, if you can't afford a smartphone outright, like, what are you doing? So, yeah, just be very careful. Okay, let's see. So, this person says, I'm going to give you my honest feelings about a 2022 Honda Pilot Special Edition and I haven't been happy with it. 
the 9-speed transmission is extremely unresponsive, backup camera isn't as good as my base model Subaru, or Subaru, I saw like a little like license plate before where it's like, it said like UWU thing, which I thought was kind of funny. Okay, and the back hatch has rust on it. I'm currently on week three, waiting to hear back from my Honda dealership about a fix for my back hatch. I wish I bought a decent used vehicle. Good luck. Let's see, what is your gross household income, and do you have any non-mortgage debt? Guidelines for car purchases. One cumulative value of all vehicles should be less than 50% of your gross income. Two monthly transportation expenses should be less than 10% of your monthly gross income. Three, new cars should be paid off within four years. Of course, these rules of thumb can be stretched in one direction or the other, but they're good general guidelines. What worries me is that it sounds like you plan to use your savings for the down payment instead of for an all-cash purchase. If you can only throw 5 to 10 k into the pot, you may want to strongly reconsider going for a brand new car. In any case, it's hard to help you with the information you've given us. Agreed. And the thing is, if you have to go into debt for something, you can't afford it, right? You might be able to pay the payments, but you can't actually afford whatever it is that you're buying. And like people need to really understand that. So if you only have 10K that is not in your emergency fund, like 10K excess cash that you saved up, only use that money to buy your car and maybe sell a previous car to just bump up the amount of money slightly so that you could get a decent vehicle. Like, for example, what I've seen what a lot of people do, as like, again, as an example, is that let's say that you got a car, that you were driving a car, and like, let's say that it was like $20,000 that you owed on it, you had like, uh, I don't know, like $10,000 um, left on the loan, right? Like you had a $20,000 loan, but you got $10,000 left of that $20,000 loan, and you get into a car accident. Someone hits you, and so what happens is that you get like a check that pays off the car, right? Which also means that you get like basically like a 10K payout on top of that. So you got 10K. What a lot of people do, which they shouldn't, but what a lot of people do is that they go try to justify, oh, let me go buy a brand new vehicle and use this $10,000 as like a down payment. Because like, I deserve it. I lost my awesome car. I deserve it, etc. Blah, 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 whatever. Right? But no, the thing is, is like, you should just buy the car that you can afford with the 10K, right? Because you're technically debt-free. You got no debt. You don't got debt on that car anymore, so now you can afford a 10K car. You were driving a 20K car, but because of the debt that you owed on it, you only got 10K back out of it, so that's all you can afford. And so that's all you can actually buy. That's what you should buy. But people just try to justify things and it's like they feel entitled to more than what they have, which is a really big issue. Like a lot of people have this sort of entitlement thing that just because they are working hard or that they are doing something or something happened to them, they feel like they deserve something more. And that's not the reality of the world because if they go down that route, they only hurt themselves by doing that. Let's see, any more comments? I don't know. Let's see.
Let's see. Buy used our family bought a lease return. Three year old Toyota Sienna. Got a great price for a car with 20,000 miles. 6K off new. It sounds like you're concerned about money, and rightly so. This inflation hurts. If you're nervous about the price, why are you buying new? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Seriously, nobody needs a new vehicle. I was shopping for a non-hybrid Odyssey Sienna for the past six months. Ideally, a premium model with a DVD entertainment package for our youngest child. We have three as well, similar ages. I have long had a rule that we'd never pay more than 25 k for a Honda Toyota vehicle if we can't buy new. Then we take our time and search for a quality used vehicle. Two weeks ago, we bought a 2017 Sienna XLE Premium with excellent service records, 125,000 miles, well, that seems pretty ex- uh, excessive, for 22,500 cash in southeast Wisconsin. Only negative found was super minor flaws and scratches on the interior trim. Quick eBay purchase of $75 worth of OEM trim replacements resolved that. And during my extensive searches, I found it hard to find local trades, but rather the vans had been bought from auction from all around the country. We also found that many dealers actually had huge lots of used vehicles on the lot, pending safety checks by their mechanics. The bottleneck was that these large dealers were short on mechanics, so the vehicles just sat. These same dealers had new minivans that sold ultra quickly, despite their 50k price. If you have a loan, now you're talking about adding interest, purchase sales, warranty fees, dealer fees, etc. When all is said and done, you're certainly looking at 60k plus for a vehicle whose primary purpose is to haul messy kits. Seriously, visualize how kids upkeep your current vehicle, then envision them doing the same to your expensive, loan-requiring minivan. My new-to-me van lasted one week before one of our children split, uh, spilt a juice box onto the carpet. Yeah. Like, pretty much this is the exact same like thing that I've been like just harping on for like the past, I don't know, like almost 30 minutes. <laughs> Jesus, 30 minutes. But basically, it's like, Buy something that you can afford in cash. Be careful with the amount that you're spending and like keep it at that point where you are okay with spending that amount of money in terms of like, I don't care what happens to the vehicle that I buy at that certain amount of money, right? Because you don't really want to be in a situation where if something happens to the vehicle, you just like break down. Because like all of your money was tied up into the vehicle, you don't know when you're gonna get your money out of the vehicle after like an accident or whatever happens. Like you don't want to be in that situation. What you want to do is be like, "Oh, my car was totaled. I'm safe. Yay! That's all that matters." And then you're okay with waiting however long it waits to get your money out of it because, financially speaking, it didn't really have that much of an impact on your life. Like, you want to spend money where if something were to happen to it, if it all just goes away, you'll be okay. Let's see. Let's see. It's a terrible deal. Assuming a five-year term, you're going to wind up paying over 50 k for an asset. When I would even consider it an asset at all. It's just a liability. That will be worth about $25,000 by the time you finally own it outright, if they even do it. Because what I've seen so many times is that people who end up getting loans on cars ends up trading the vehicle in before they're actually paid off to a newer car. So that they end up actually getting into a deeper hole with the newer car. So basically screwing themselves even more. Let's see, they say just get a three to five year old Odyssey is basically the product, but you will save 25k. And it was really funny. Like, one vehicle I have always thought about getting, potentially, me personally, is um, a Dodge Challenger. And the reason why is that you could pretty much buy like any year Dodge Challenger and it 
basically looks the same like a brand new one. So you can probably buy like a 2012 or a 2013 Dodge Challenger and it looks like a 2023 Dodge Challenger. It's like, it's just so funny because it has like pretty much the same style, but also like I saw like a random Dodge Challenger that was completely blacked out. Like that just looked absolutely sick, but it was like an older Dodge Challenger. And I'm like, this thing probably cost like not much money compared to the brand new ones because like brand new Dodge Challengers are like like forty fifty thousand dollars, but the one that I saw this like blacked out sick looking Dodge Challenger was like the guy probably or yeah probably a guy who bought it honestly probably only spent like ten k on it because it probably has a crazy amount of miles on that Dodge Challenger. And then just put in a whole bunch of mods onto that car. Although it's probably also pretty hard to find like a Dodge Challenger that cheap. So like realistically speaking, he probably spent like 20k for that Dodge Challenger. Like realistically. But that's still cheaper than like the 40k that it, it, like the brand new ones are right now. Let's see. Anything else? If you feel bad about this person, you should listen to that voice. Not bad. You aren't getting a real 3.9% rate. Your dealership is buying the rate down because they are gouging you on the sales price. Buying a 50k minivan and depleting your savings and taking on a large payment while having three kids isn't smart. Wait another six months and look for a used vehicle. Your wife can make do for now. The thing is, like, I still don't really understand the, like, the the justification behind buying this brand new car. Because, like, the original poster hasn't really made any sort of, like, post about their whole situation. Hold on, let me see. Ms. FKU... Let's see. So this person says, ignore what car prices are doing. It's not possible to predict the future. There's no way to know if now is better to buy or next year. Stick to what you know now. 3.9% is a fantastic rate. I'd be terrified too if I had to spend all my savings just for the down payment. Is a good indicator you can't afford the vehicle. So the original poster says that that's a good point. I definitely think we can afford it, but seeing the impact month to month would be a good thing. Let's see, what is your gross household income? Blah, 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 blah. Let's see, this one says, I really appreciate you sending these guidelines. I will run the numbers and see where I come out. I'm worried about being upside down on the loan at some point. Yeah, see, like, if you have that worry about being upside down on the loan, guess what? They could just repo your car. And you are really screwed if that happens. Like, financially speaking, it would be horrible. Let's see. Hold on. So a two, six, eight-year-old are going to destroy a minivan. Why spend 45K on the nicest one? What's to stop you from getting a five-year-old minivan with 30K miles for less than 30K? The original poster responded, that's a discussion I've had multiple times already. The new minivan is a compromise, plus the next vehicle five to eight years down the road would be a truck for me. So like, what, this is basically saying like, oh, my wife gets this minivan because it's the compromise because then I'm allowed to get a nice truck later down the line. It's like, what? Hmm, let's see. Okay, I guess that's basically it for this one. Yeah, I I think this person should not do this at all for multiple reasons, like I already stated. If you got to take out a loan, you can't afford it. Two, it's going to get destroyed by the kids. Three, the value of the car is going to get, like, just 
decimated for you are <laughs> you're constantly losing money every single month like you are spreading yourself thin every single month right because you're basically using all of your money your excess money for the down payment on the vehicle like you simply just cannot afford the car five you can find a cheaper alternative six you are mainly thinking about just doing this just so that you are given the uh, entitlement right to buy a nice truck within like six years like come on like you're mainly only doing this to make the wife happy so that you can get happy later on with a cool sick truck that you also probably can't afford as well like People need to stop spending so much money on cars that they just can't afford at all. And like, like I just don't understand it too. It's like, a car is going to get you to point A to point B, right? And if you're mainly getting a car to transport your kids, do you really need something super nice for that? I mean, like, and again, like, there's nothing wrong with buying, like, a nice car because you want to have a nice car. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But trying to justify you getting a new car when you really can't afford it just puts the whole family in a very bad financial place. And I just don't understand it. Like, don't do this. If you want to learn how to get a debt, go to 40 Learn how I got a debt and grew my net worth. Stay tuned for more financial commentary. Feel free to give your thoughts about what this person should do. Because I think this is just a super dumb choice.